Episode 1 is the worst episode. But that should give you high hopes right there, because that means you can only go up from here. And BoJack is a show that just keeps going up. Now, the overall premise of BoJack Horseman is pretty simple. It's pretty much the ups and downs in the life of a washed up sitcom star trying to get back on his feet. But it's the deeper details that make the show more engaging. When you first start and see Bojack, you are not going to like him. And by the time you're all caught up, you're still not going to like him, but you're going to be rooting for him anyways. Bojack is not a good person, but he's not a bad person. He's just a person who's trying to do more good things and less bad things, but failing miserably. The thing is, there's something in Bojack for everyone. You're going to relate to him, even if you don't want to. If you're a content creator who feels washed up and doesn't know where to go from here, Bojack knows how you feel. If you suffer from some horrible addiction or substance abuse, Bojack knows how you feel. If you suffer from depression, Bojack knows how you feel. So many shows and cartoons especially depict depression horribly, but Bojack not only does it right, but the best I've ever seen in a TV show. What else could the universe possibly owe you? I want to feel good about myself the way you do and i don't know how i don't know if i can but okay let's say you don't relate to bojack there's still plenty of characters for you aside from bojack himself there are four other main characters that the show follows the first of which is diane if you're a socially anxious introvert then she's probably for you if you're a super hard worker who constantly makes things difficult for yourself maybe not even wanting a simple life then you've got Princess Carolyn. If you're crazy optimistic and doing your best to keep everyone's positivity up when they're upset, then you've got Mr. Peanut Butter. Or if you're just some guy in a rut trying to do something with your life, then you're Todd. But that's not all these characters are. There are two sides to all these coins, and we'll get more into them later. I want to go ahead and talk about something that may turn off some first-time viewers or people who are judging by trailers and clips. The art style. Now definitely at first I will agree that it does look very stiff and lifeless, similar to that of Family Guy. But the fact of the matter is, the general premise of the show doesn't really ask for anything more. And besides, it definitely does all that it can do with that art style. There are some scenes that will surprise you that I dare not spoil. One thing I will talk about though are the musical numbers. They are absolutely brilliant and flow well with the plot, knowing just when to happen and not interrupting anything important. There's not too many I can recommend because spoilers, but definitely check out I Will Always Think of You. Bojack does many things well, and sound design is one of them. The main theme is slow and melancholy, but still a total jam, matching the theme of the show. A lot of the background music is very subtle, but does set the mood for the scenes that it plays in. And there's plenty of licensed songs that pop up here and there too. It's not whatever is popular or relevant at the time, it just whatever fits the scene best, and it totally works. No, you don't deserve to die young. Only the greats die young. Oh, uh, now you think you're young all of a sudden. One drink. There's one episode with little to no dialogue at all. It relies on the visuals along with music and sound to tell its story, and it works amazingly. And there's one episode that's just a single shot of Bojack giving a huge speech at a funeral for 20 minutes, and it works. It doesn't get boring because the writing is just that good. It's a pretty big episode too, considering whose funeral Bojack is speaking at. So obviously because spoilers, I can't recommend it be the first episode you check out, but getting to it will be more than worth it. The writing in the show has also impressed me a lot through its insane continuity. There's one episode that takes place on the same night in four different years. It keeps several things consistent and even reveals plenty of key moments, like the day Todd decided to start crashing with Bojack. Now, some people will overanalyze the show's writing and claim it to be some kind of nihilistic existence is meaningless kind of thing. And it's literally because of like one or two small scenes, but come on, tons of cartoons have had stuff like that. Especially during drugged and trippy scenes, which Bojack has quite a few of. Bojack is just telling the story of Bojack and what's under the glamorous facade that Hollywood likes to put on. Another area the writing is great in though, is the humor. Bojack somehow managed to do something that no other talking animal cartoon has managed to do. They made me laugh at an elephant in the room joke. I dare not spoil it. You gotta see it for yourself. Overall, the humor is very snappy and self-aware, and there are tons of running jokes. One of them is bound to be your favorite. My personal favorite are these rhyming tongue twisters that just pop out of nowhere and surprise you. This 
was supposed to be Courtney's crossover coronation. But that's sort of been thwarted, unfortunately, because Courtney's purportedly falling short of shoring up four quadrant support. Makes perfect sense so far. The best part of the show's writing, though, is how it handles the characters. Just like in real life, no one here is perfect. There is only ever one perfect man, and look what they did to him. So going back to the two sides to every coin that I mentioned earlier, let's dive deeper into the characters. Most viewers are most likely going to relate to Bojack, whether they want to or not. But then they'll think to themselves, look at all these horrible things Bojack is doing. If I'm exactly like him and the things I've done aren't as bad, then I guess I'm okay. But trust me, the writers knew some people were gonna try and get that message out of it, so they shut that down hard and fast. Bojack is meant to be relatable, not likable. He's not a hero, he's just the titular character. Bojack as a character is going to make you uncomfortable, especially when you see yourself in him. And this is where I have to give a warning. Everything that everyone has said about this show is true. It gets too real. People aren't exaggerating. It knows how to get into your head more than Doki Doki Literature Club, another product people compliment for its psychological analysis. But not only does Bojack do it more, but they also don't sugarcoat it by romanticizing it with anime waifus. I have severe social anxiety that I saw a counselor for, and not once in my entire life has any show, movie, or video game given me a panic attack. Bojack Horseman has given me three. So definitely be careful about the show if you can't handle things like that. Thankfully I can, and wow, what an experience. And that's just on Bojack. We haven't even gotten to the other sides of the rest of the main characters. You didn't know I had it in me, did you? No, I knew. Like I said before though, no matter how unlikable Bojack is, you're going to root for him, and then you're gonna feel bad about doing so. Because you know that he wants to get better and he doesn't like who he is, but he's just not trying hard enough. He can change, but he just doesn't. It's like that with other characters too, even the ones that seem like great people from the outside. Mr. Peanut Butter is an excellent example. He's happy all the time, does his best to help people see the positive in every situation, and he loves people. He just seems like a great happy guy with no character flaws, but the truth is... He doesn't know how to handle a bad situation. He always tries to make things seem happier than they are, and tries to cheer people up when they're at their lowest, even when they need to be sad. Mr. Peanut Butter hates conflict and will do anything to avoid it when it needs to be addressed, or even when he himself is the conflict. See? One second ago from my description, you thought he was just some happy guy who could do no wrong. But now you're probably thinking he's just some sad, naive man-child who doesn't know how to take anything seriously and grow up. And it's like that with all the characters. Is Diane just an anxious introvert that needs more time to herself and needs things to go a little bit slower? Or does she like to just do meaningless things by herself to give people the illusion she's independent and helpful to others? Does Princess Carolyn deserve to be rewarded for all her hard work, considering how hard she works and what kind of place she came from? Or was she just too mean and selfish to the people she met on the way up to where she is now? And does she deserve any of the rewards or hardships she's still currently dealing with? And is Todd really a great guy trying to make something of himself? Or does he secretly love his lazy lifestyle where he mooches off of people and just puts on the facade of trying to change in order to get people to let him stay around longer? We should put on something else. You got it. Coming up, we got a brand new single from 21 Pilots. Ooh, back to the podcast. Just like the show states and these characters represent, there are no good and bad people. Just people who do good things and people who do bad things. And all we can really do is try to do more good and less bad. That's why these characters are so relatable and why you can connect to them even when you don't want to. They remind you of things you don't like about yourself and make you uncomfortable about your flaws, but they do give you hope that you can change. This show has something for everyone. More than enough for everyone. Just the characters and writing alone make it a phenomenal show. Add all the musical numbers, the great humor, and when you finally watch it, you'll be scratching your head at why you didn't decide to watch it sooner. If you haven't decided to watch BoJack Horseman yet, then I definitely recommend it. All the positive things people say about it are true. That is all I have to say about the series though, so definitely go check it out. Leopold the Brave, out. You were born broken. That's your birthright. You're Bojack Horseman. There's no cure for that.